Hi everybody, all my Trinity family and friends. I wanted to do a little video and share an experience that I had with you and what I, at least how I am interpreting it. I know that as this thing goes on longer and longer, it just feels like everything that we've been used to is out the window. The world has kind of spun out of control. And I know that I've probably even used those words. Um, and I have the feeling that the Holy Spirit thought I wanted to know what that was actually like. I woke up a couple mornings ago and opened my eyes, turned my head, looked out the window, and wham, got hit with a huge wave of dizziness. It went away pretty quickly, um, was unsettling, but I thought, eh, oh well, it's done. Um, the next day, I had a little bit more of it in the morning. I tried to um, convince myself that it was all fine. It was not really anything. And then on uh, Tuesday evening, um, getting ready for bed and went to pull my sweatshirt off over my head. And I was hit with such a, violent is the only word I can think to use for it, wave of dizziness that it literally threw me to the floor. It knocked me down. Mercifully, I fell in the middle of the room on a nice soft carpet, didn't hit my head on anything, scared the wits out of Peter, and you know, so sort of got me back up off the floor and I sat on the bed and I thought, well, that was awful. It really feels awful. And um, so I leaned back and it happened again. So by now Peter has said, do you think you want to go to the emergency room? And I thought, <laughs> why would I want to go to the emergency room? Who in their right mind wants to go to an emergency room right now? But I realized that I probably needed to. So by the time we got in the car, um, I was really scared. My um, ability to catastrophize this into, uh, you know, serious brain tumor or something was running wild in my head. Anyway, we got to Goose Lane and um, the first thing that happened that told me that this was um, more metaphoric than anything was that I got there and I was the only patient there. We're in the middle of a pandemic and there was nobody in the emergency room. So they checked me in when I said the word dizzy, they grabbed a wheelchair and um, took me back. And the staff was wonderful as they always are there. Um, started doing what they do, started the IV, um, you know, all the questions and data statistics. They did an EKG, my heart was fine, everything was okay. Um, there was a, a wonderful young man, a PA named Steve, um, who was taking care of me along with the nurse. And he said, well, we want to wait till we get your labs back. And um, so the fact that I was the only person there, my labs came back in a half an hour, which of course, you know, never happens. Peter couldn't come with me. Um, he had to, he was waiting out in the car and then went home because they said it's going to be a couple of hours. So. Um, eventually, Steve came in and he said, now, um, we could do a CAT scan, but we don't think there's any reason to hit your brain with radiation because we know pretty much what this is. Um, I had what was called, or have, I guess, what was called BPV. Benign, a really nice word, meaning not serious, not going to harm me. Um, positional, meaning wrought on by the position of my head or changing the position of my head. Vertigo, BPV. Apparently, I am um, uh, more at risk. Women tend to get this more. Women of a certain age are even more at risk. What they said is it's not serious. It won't hurt you unless you happen to do this at the top of a cliff or at the top of a long staircase or something and fall down and hurt yourself. So he said, and we have something that can help you. And it's not a drug. It's something called an Epley maneuver, which um, involves sort of you throwing yourself down onto the bed and turning your head in various positions um, and then sitting up. But what this does 
is it, this condition comes from little crystals in your ears that go rogue and go to places they're not supposed to go and make you feel very, very dizzy, make you feel like you're moving, but you're not. Um, this maneuver sort of forces those crystals to go back to their room and leave you alone. Um, so he showed me this, and which was kind of scary because it makes all the symptoms come back, um, which is gross and makes you feel nauseous. And um, But down on the bed, turn over, sit up fast, and the symptoms were gone. It was gone. Um, so it was just the wildest experience. And all of my catastrophizing was for naught. And as um, after the maneuver, Steve said, okay, you're done, you can go home. <laughs> And so I called Peter and he came and got me. And on the way home, of course, I start metaphorizing this experience. And just some of the things that I learned, I don't ask for help well. I don't like to admit that I need it. Um, so number one, that was a, you know, be an adult and ask for help when you need it. Be open and be willing to listen to help when it comes. That was, um, even, even when it sounds strange, and this thing certainly sounded strange. And the whole thing about that maneuver was it told me that to get through something, you have to be willing to fall. You have to be willing to fall into the thing that makes you afraid. This is something that I've known for a long time. I guess I needed a reminder. And then be willing to sit and listen, and listen, and listen. Through all of this, what I realized was that we're so consumed with what we see in front of us right now. So many people out of work, so many people struggling to pay their bills, not knowing when we can come back together as the congregation and worship. And, and be with each other again. That it felt like everything that was normal wasn't working anymore. But as I read this experience, if I read it like I dreamt it, a, a waking dream, um, I just got told that even in the midst of a world that seems like it's spinning out of control, God's laws are still in effect we see experiences, evidence of abundance all around us, generosity, people coming together to help each other, and then looking for more ways to do it. It's really been quite extraordinary. So the laws of love and abundance and generosity are still in force. Um, we just don't always see it. And so I guess for all of us, I just got an experience that said, pay attention to this. Um, it's really going to be okay. It might take a little while and it might be a little destabilizing, a little dizzying, but we are going to be okay. We will be okay. And um, that was a dramatic way to learn it, to be reminded of it. I'm, uh, I'm grateful. I'm really grateful and I'm going to be fine. I, I'm having to do this weird Epley thing every now and then. I feel a little dizzy, so I go like throw myself down and sit back up and it's fine. So anyway, um, I can't wait to see you all. We're working on uh, thinking through what things will look like when we can finally start to maybe have some worship together sometime, sometime, um, but not until it's going to be safe. So anyway, I love you all. I miss you all very much and um, uh, be well and, um, and ask for help if you need it. Bye-bye.